Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 49 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Paris, and this is Chris. Hi. This time, we're fucking dead! We're oh God. dead and what trying happened? to figure out just how to fuck with these incorporeal forms of ours. <laughs> Luckily, a copy of David Strom's Beginner's Guide to Sex in the Afterlife was just waiting here for us when we arrived in Purgatory. That's the first thing I'm concerned with after dying is how do I get my dick wet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, thankfully we have The Beginner's Guide to Sex in the Afterlife, an explanation of the extraordinary potential of sexual energy by David Stom. Uh, you know, just in our hands right now, in our in our um, astral ghost hand. hands, I, It's ghost falling hands. through my fingers every time I try to grab it because it's not a ghost book. It's a real book you can find in real life. Right, so how, how, do, how are dead people supposed to be reading this? Like, are ghosts reading the physical book or or like are you supposed to read it before you die remember everything like take really good notes and then just like recall it uh after death i i'm not fucking sure well, i don't that I don't know. that part of the conceit of the whole book here is a little uh wishy-washy much like everything else in the book <laughs> so you know yeah i'm uh, not gonna think too hard about that part quite yet. I, I suppose you're supposed to go to the ghost library or perhaps <laughs> haunt someone with a copy of the book <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, so, uh, if this is your first time listening to the show, uh, what we do here at the Terrible Book Club is that we read books that we think will be bad based on their cover, summary, title, synopsis, or some combination thereof. So we force ourselves to read books that we would never otherwise choose to read kind of in our you know regular day-to-day lives. Usually this experiment results in a hilariously disappointing read like today, although once in a while a great book comes along that at least partially subverts our assumptions. So... Uh, we chose this because the title is absurd. I mean... Yeah, it, right out the gate. I forget exactly how we got exposed to this, but as soon as we saw it... It was on a list of the worst, like, self-help books, and we, we really wanted to do, like, a, a self-help book or, like, a, a how-to book. Unfortunately, this didn't actually turn out to... I mean, I guess it's a self-help book, it's but not it's what not I like... Wanted. It's not like step one, take out your ghost dick. Step two, put your ghost dick near a ghost lady. Like, that's not what this is. I I mean, it sounds like it's what it is, but it's not. That's what I wanted going into this. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention content warnings. Uh, This episode contains discussions of sex and death, including specific references to genitalia a whole lot. But we've already been doing that. So, yeah, it's probably fine. You picked up on it. All right. Uh, The I'll just I'll just read the summary real quick. It's actually a short one this week. Ahem. The Beginner's Guide to Sex in the Afterlife is the follow-up to David Stump's quirky and popular Beginner's Guide for the Recently Deceased. It assumes, as did his first book, that the reader is dead and takes the reader on a tour of the subject. With humor and intelligence, this guidebook explores the origin, purpose, and potential of sexual energy. It explains how sexual energy moves through our solar system and through us. Readers will also learn how to work with sexual energy for a richer and more fulfilled life, balance their masculine and feminine energies, and improve the quality of their love. Uh, Yeah, so I thought this was going to be about how to get it on with ghost ladies or something. And it, I don't, that's not what it was? No, Um, actually, we should quickly mention the main characters and the setting. So this is sort of like just a fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants anecdotal, like, vomit uh, shit where this guy is just like... Uh, this is how I feel about this, and, like, this is also how I feel about this, and hey, what about this thing? So, um, our main characters are the penis and the vagina. Yeah, very prominently, uh, Like, every, everything's a penis, and everything's a vagina. Um, it it can sometimes be both. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Usually, actually, most things are both because everything is sex all the time. Yes. Um, act- literally everything. All right. We also got Earth, the sun. The sun, it be- the sun becomes a major character by the end of this book. <laughs> It's not a character. It's perhaps the focal yeah. point of of the worship in this book. Yo, he sun tells worship. you. He tells you specifically that the sun is a being, and you need to develop a relationship with it, and you should tell it you love it. <laughs> Go outside, take a look at it. You know, don't body shame the sun. Or everyone always looks away from the sun. It's yeah. really sensitive about. Yeah, that. Yeah, seriously. Like he says, you got to maintain this relationship with the sun. All sexual energy comes from the sun. So. <laughs> That I mean, he says that I'm I, like this sounds there's like there's a specific thing I want to say about that. It really <laughs> makes me think that everyone should throw away their Viagra prescriptions and just invest in Sunny D as heavily as they can. Because if if think about it, if Sunny D is the power of the sun and the sun is the source of all of our sexual energy, then clearly, if my dick don't work, I'll just drink a whole case of that and I should be fine. Right? Well, no, you should just stand outside naked and absorb all the sexual energy oh, from yeah. the sun oh, sorry. and then die wait. because you've roasted yourself alive. Wait, does that mean plants are like super horny all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, by this logic, yeah, anything that's engaging in, um, uh, what's the word for photosynthesis? photosynthesis? Yeah. Anything engaging in photosynthesis must be the most sexual of things. So... Plants, the most sexual of things. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah. Also, we're we're on the astral plane. So this, so something I hated about this book, um, other than all of it, was how it was written. Like, but I hate all of the content, but I also hate how <laughs> it was written. Like, uh, there's not much to like here. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> with no, you. I mean there were. I think there were like three statements that I was like, yeah, I agree with you there. Okay, but yeah, like, like for he, ha- one he doesn't sentence. say anything like you know we sh- horrible <laughs> or or bad. He just he generally has this very hippie like quality of like we should love in the best way we can. You should do you know avoid conflicts or try to deflect them and 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 not have negative energy in your life but okay great thanks for that little tidbit that uh, is also really i'm easy. gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree with you i actually think some of the things he has to say could kind of be harmful for people um but i think quickly we can just run down a couple of the things he said that i thought were fine he was like i don't know what, what was he like he was like you know suppressing sex is a terrible idea it's really unhealthy and i was like yeah in general that's true i mean unless you're like somebody who is chased for some, I don't know, religious purpose. And even then that has, that has or problems. Or perhaps but, just asexual. Or perhaps just asexual, right. But like, if you, you know, if you have sexual urges, assuming they're not illegal or non-consensual, um, you know, there's no, there's no reason to suppress them. But at the same time, he's saying, you know, you still got to be responsible about, you know, you're fucking. And, and I agree with that. I think that's totally yeah, fine. Totally like, fine. like, you're right about that, dude. Uh, and I think he said, I don't know, there were like two other two other lines. Maybe He's generally one. just like, be, you know, find the best quality of love you can, love with your whole being and not just with, you know, a lustful intent or something. But that's fine sometimes, too. Like, yeah, I, yeah, that's the thing I, I didn't like is he, he basically said that um, just having, he said that uh, you, you can't have sex without love. Having sex without love is like the one of the worst, like, sin to commit sex. like he, he doesn't say sin but yeah and i was like dude plenty of people have sex without being in love like all the time and there's nothing wrong with that assuming both parties or all parties i guess are you know kind of consenting to the fact that it's it's not a uh, long-term and are honest with each other which thing. is very yeah. difficult of course yeah but but you know what i mean like there, it can be done i you know it's i i just feel like shaming people into only having sex when you're deeply in love is i don't know it feels real like abrahamic repressive, faith much and like repressive. He yeah like and it's funny because he's he he mixes a lot of different uh there's like a real a real fucking cocktail going of of religions and and beliefs in this it's pretty short much book. The everything and the kitchen sink anything <laughs> he can drag yeah. in here to kind of fuel his very flimsy philosophy is, yeah. is is ripe for the taking yeah let's let's go over so so one is worship the goddamn sun like he literally yeah. is like worship the sun but um, also god uh yeah oh so okay so fucking worship the sun also fuck the sun um yeah <laughs> uh, uh uh G- jesus uh was talking about penises in the vi- jesus was talking about penises and vaginas 
he, he says that he's like, oh, this biblical translation could totally be be read as though Jesus was talking about sex. And I was like, no, no, it can't be They're like, no, you're taking this way Pretty too much. far. Here's the deal. Anything that's like a straight line is a dick and anything that's a circle is a vagina. Yes. That's how this book works. OK, right. and then, I just and laid there you bare. Go. Half uh, the philosophy. He's also got like a dash of uh, he's got he's got all the chakras. He's talking about chakras and the astral plane. So like, yep. you get a little bit of that going. Got a little bit of the like uh, tantric, you know, beliefs in there. I mean, it's kind of all over the place. Like you were saying, it's sort of just a kitchen sink of you know, or everything but the kitchen. I, I everything sorry. and the kitchen and sink the kitchen of sink. like philosophy and religion. It, you know, he, again, it's just whatever kind of serves his flimsy idea because boy, does he not really spend a lot of time justifying anything. Yeah. I mean, and again, the whole premise of this book. So the joking, uh, the joking, um, like setting for the book, ugh, I can't uh, device is that, Oh, ha ha. Well, you're dead now. And, you know, let me show you around the dead world, the astral plane. But he talks throughout the entire book as though he's either been dead before um, or is currently dead now and has intimate knowledge of, like, of afterlife. And and, and he's he says confident. It, he's he, he's exactly, very confident exactly. in what he happens. Sa- he says it in such a definitive way that it's extremely off-putting because you're like, well... How I mean, you're clearly not dead if you're writing this book, right? Like, as far as we know, no one has been able to reproduce a book from death. Um, so, sorry. And I mean, I know that there are people who claim to be able to travel on astral planes and stuff, but, like, we have no way to fucking prove that because that's an experience that happens only to that one person. It's, it's not verifiable, you know. Um, My uh, little, I guess, problem with this, more than a little problem... Is that why does it have to be a dead thing? Why can't this just be like astral plane sex book? Yeah, of... yeah. I I was also confused about that. Like, and I guess I guess it's because they're I guess it's because they're the same place, which I didn't know. Um, but I I but guess. But how does he know that, and how is he well, sure about that? I don't exactly. That's the question. Like, it doesn't make sense. So, like the just the main premise. No. So the title is misleading. This does not tell you how to have sex when you're dead. Um, two. It, the whole premise is not, I, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. Like, either either we have to accept that the author is writing this from the grave, or that he can traverse the astral plane, and I'm telling you, I, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't get there. I can't meet you there. No, can't meet trust you on him, the astral he totally plane. did it. No. He totally did it. Now have sex with him. <laughs> trust me. See, and that's how this book comes off. This whole book is written as though... He's like this college freshman who just finished philosophy 101. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about philosophy in the cafeteria and get even his ladies. about the author picture looks like oh. that. <laughs> I'm so glad you saw that too because I didn't know if you did, and I, I was did. gonna bring up how fucking dumb he looks. Sorry, but he's got this shit eating smirk on his face, and he looks like he's in his you know mid twenties, yeah, maybe maybe early thirties. What about it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. He's got a, a lot of a lot of shitty things. Like at the very beginning, he uses this this convention where he's like, "And now we're in uh, Egypt, and now we're in Tonga, and now we're gonna go here." Like you know, we're dead, so we can go wherever we want. It's like if the astral plane is separate from physical existence, why would you still reference things on Earth? Right? Like I don't I don't understand. <laughs> The like, astral plane is kind of like detective vision in the Batman games. It's just like a filter over like the real, <laughs> like if you don't have the astral eyes, you can't see that shit. So the next Instagram filter is going to be at the astral plane. Like, yes, that's gonna exactly. Be the next one. Uh, you know, and, and so it's written in this real like lazy way. He contradicts himself a lot because, I mean, I think that he might understand the nuance in in some of these concepts, but he just doesn't articulate them well enough to explain them. So he ends up sacrificing actual understanding for wide appeal. So like my biggest example of this is that throughout the whole book, he comes across as this very heteronormative Western, um, like male, female, masculine, feminine, everything is one or the other. And then one time he mentions that, Oh, those words aren't actually like, how you think about them normally, but meh. And it's like, dude, 
no, you have to explain it. You can't just say that because you're saying that, but what you're showing us is Western heteronormativity. And, and and to just have one line that's like, oh, it's not really, though. Like, no, it is then, because you're not spending the time to explain it. All right. This is, I think, a good jumping off point to start deconstructing his uh, philosophy here. Huh. Um, and the Jesus. first thing that we can start off right away, aside from uh, Sunny D being big dick energy, literally <laughs> yeah, you know, it really encapsulated. Is. Uh, my first huge, like, the first thing he hits you with is, like, okay, get this. All creative processes are sexual by nature, you see. Yeah, cool. Uh, <laughs> his biggest example here, my favorite example, too, is he's like, okay, think about, like, when you write a computer program. Okay, guys, get the, what's inside a computer. It's ones <laughs> and zeros, right? Well, what if you put the one in the zero, huh? Whoa. It's like sex, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and, like, I can't help but laugh because it sounds like a joke someone would make about a philosopher, but this is really what this guy is trying okay, to Okay, little tell sidebar people. here. I was reading this book in bed with, uh, my, with my girlfriend next to me, and she asked me, she knows about oh, this whole thing, oh, so she no. asked me to explain to her what I was reading about, and I got to this part about, uh, okay, I laid out that it was a whole sex thing, and this guy like likes to find sex and everything. So I go like, okay, so he has this idea about computer programs, and I go, okay, you know about ones and zeros? And she immediately made the finger through the whole gesture. <laughs> So she was on. She knew immediately. What was well, on. and he actually even describes that gesture in the text, which was oh, yeah. just out he, of this he world. He leaves no opportunity to have some kind of eye waggly innuendo thrown at, <laughs> at you no. when he, whenever he can do it. And, and so his yeah. So he really he sits there and tries to explain how computer coding. Um, hydroelectricity uh, dams or something like because the everything... motor does the in and out thing, and I don't think that's exactly what's happening. I no. think it's the electromagnetic field actually spinning the motor if it's like a coil and wire kind of style. Yeah, and and he says all creative or you know processes. So I was like, oh, cool. Does that mean I'm like having an orgy every time I go to band practice or play a show? Like, yeah, I, you're I mean, having that's... a sense eight <laughs> yeah. style mind orgy every time you we, you try to write Dude, music with your band. Yeah, like, I, that doesn't... No, I'm not having a mind orgy with my band. Like, that's not happening. That's what you think. You're just not uh, freely expressing your sunny D sun energy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We gotta, you, we gotta you, play well, in the sun. You walked to band practice. <laughs> you walked to band practice in the sun. <laughs> And then all of your sun energy combines to to fuck in in the band practice room to make music. Oh, that just sounds horrible. Can, I, the, the sec, he has like four examples for this creative process thing, but so the only ones that care about the other computer program and the other one. Okay, so he has this other idea about how thoughts are like given form in the astral plane, and he calls oh, them thought oh, forms. Oh, no. <laughs> and his idea of how people get new thoughts is when external thought forms bang your brain or something and the thought yeah, sex creates um, new ideas. Yep. That so is, there, there's like yep. thought, thought fucking happening and that's how you have new ideas. It's not just... See, the better way to think about this was like, what if it's just your own experiences combining together to fuck and create a new idea? That seems a little bit more logical to me than no these uh brain thetans are coming from outside to dick your brain really good <laughs> yep yeah it's ideas a, yeah it's almost like you're existing as a living organism and experiencing external stimuli uh <laughs> no, like no it's the it's the jizz ghosts <laughs> yep um because how are thought forms made paris oh well, oh god you want to cover this one we're kind of in this in this area right now because so thought forms are made by having uh you know really bit intense thoughts about a certain thing and the one example he brings up is like hey if you jerk off you're making some bad thought forms no he claims that when you jerk off you create astral babies that's the thought astral forms. Ba no astral babies and thought forms i think are two different things <laughs> i think they're the same <laughs> i think they're different so every but time Paris, every matter. time you've had a cool idea or like you came up with a new song, that was someone's jizz ghost entering your brain and fucking it <laughs> until you had a new idea. <laughs> and every time, wait, so every time you jerk off, you create astral babies. What about every time I jerk off? What do I I'm create? I'm sure that's the same thing. 
You, that's your masculine energy. You could be masculine too. David's all right with uh, that. Uh, no. Well, no, because you're emissive and you create sperm and those are astral sperms. They become astral babies. Yeah, so babies. when you do the lady version of that, you're emissing thought forms <laughs> as well. <laughs> God, I just want to die. So I'm dead. <laughs> oh. Well, we are. No, it's okay. We already are dead. Oh yeah, you're right. We are dead. Sick. Um, yeah. I I almost forgot. He he. Sorry, we're gonna be jumping around a lot because there's just there is so much to talk about in this book. It's just <laughs> all so bad. Um, he opens the book by saying, you know, the the most profound and mysterious thing ever sex and i was like <laughs> dude sex is a not the most profound or b the most mysterious subject there are copious scientific volumes on sex and like <laughs> emotions and and physical se- like if he didn't it, bring up the, 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 true the statement. finger in the whole thing so often i would question whether he knew how to do it to be honest with you yeah <laughs> Maybe i mean he just didn't know at first and honestly, so this book is so full of logical fallacies. Like, I just stopped counting them after, I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've been in my, like, you know, philosophy uh, uh, mode. But, you know, like, that that actually, what I just talked about is an example of a divine fallacy where because something is so great, it must be the result of divine forces. You know, like, sex is so cool and so awesome, so it has to be uh profound and mysterious and divine and it's like no it doesn't like i mean he just like like uh the modal fallacy like just because something looks like a penis and something looks like a vagina doesn't mean they have to be representative of genitals but it's a thing that he layers constantly to make his sexual that, that's philosophy the whole book. I'm happen gonna be honest with you oh god i mean there's like false equivalence and false analogy i mean it goes on like if you hey you know what anyone out there who wants to teach uh fallacies or logic in a philosophy class like use this book that would be a fantastic this, use for this book actually, actually yeah that is probably the only reason this book should be uh read or shown to anyone um it's a great example of a lot of logical fallacies um not only is his logic thin but his use of metaphor is as well because boy does he have the most basic bitch metaphors in his arsenal yeah and examples and, for things dude th- well that's what i mean like all these like false analogies he's just like yeah that thing's like that thing and it's like, no, no, those things aren't alike. You're just, you're just saying they are. Like, do you remember when he fucking dropped the mango analogy in the middle of doing it? He just stopped. I Please elaborate on the mango analogy <laughs> here for our listeners. Okay, so, actually, this is actually towards the end of the book. He's, uh, oh, oh, right. So, he, one of the phrases, I have to explain this before I go into this analogy. Um, there is a phrase in this book that he repeats probably anywhere between 12 to 20 times. It's a lot of times in a book that's only like 180 pages. He loves to talk about sucking dry, sucking it dry, <laughs> sucking them dry. Like, he's got to suck and, everything out of everywhere to get the, the pure thought forms out of everything. He's, he's harvesting them directly. And this is what Chris was talking about. We're like, He'll never skip an opportunity to make, uh, like, a sexual illusion or whatever. So, at, at uh, one point, okay, at one point, he's talking about how, like, the you can have a better quality of love if you balance all your chakras and your masculine and feminine energy. And the way he says, the way he, like, really drives the point home is, like, looking with love allows this deep penetration into reality. Yep. <laughs> so, not only are we fucking the sun over here to help worship and complete the circuit or whatever but we're also fucking reality itself man that's the true sex master of the astral plane coming at you yep uh he says okay so he's like uh the love expressed by this this first couple we observed is a product of their personality and he thinks personality is like kind of lesser a bit your base um, your very like base uh, nature and urges, and he thinks your individuality is the higher representation of yourself, the more elevated uh, and learned and considerate version of yourself. So he says, our personality expresses the kind of love where we don't really love the other person so much as what they can do for us. Our personality is usually offended by the suggestion, but it's true. It loves taking what the other can give and loves being satisfied. 
If our partner were a mango, our personality would love them for their succulent flesh, which it would then uh. proceed to suck dry. Eventually, when our partner had nothing more to give, our personality would have no trouble discarding them. The love expressed by the second couple, on the other hand, was a product of their individuality. Then he goes on and he doesn't... He doesn't do the comparison with nope. how the mango would be treated in the second couple. And I'm like, nope, dude. Mango is just a sinful lust uh, fruit. No, mangoes are delicious and I love them. <laughs> and I I will not have you treat my good fruit that way, you fucking terrible author. <laughs> Damn it. You know what? I can handle a lot, but don't you touch my fucking mangoes. You, oh, the, 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 the jizz ghosts and astro babies are totally fine <laughs> with you. Hey, By you the way, what? did... I, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can go first. Oh, no. I was just going to say, hey, you know what, man? Mangoes are part of my everyday experience. I literally have them every morning in my breakfast smoothie. Frozen mangoes. They're close That's to my heart. That's just your lustful personality <laughs> yeah, yeah. driving you instead of your individuality, Paris. you got to balance those chakras so you can eat a mango oh, the right way. Yeah, I know. Look, at, look at it with love in, in your heart <laughs> so that you can fuck it or the sun. No. I don't know. <laughs> What if you squeeze the mango juice into the Sunny D? What happens then? Is that like a superpower drink? You just become like a super sex being. You'd have a huge dick energy instead. (laughs) Um, What was I going to say? Oh, uh, I I remember what I was going to say. You have a lot of good jokes in these notes. I hope you remember them all. It's the part about, okay, so remember when we talked about, uh, you know, (laughs) The thought babies coming out of whatever you masturbate or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He also has the very sort of Trump-like thought that, hey, if you jizz a lot, you're reducing your masculine energy. And therefore, you'll be weaker if you masturbate a lot. I wasn't quite clear on whether it was just coming a lot or masturbating a lot no, 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 that he, did it in. No, he said coming a lot. He said that you're not supposed to come a lot because it literally takes your physical energy to restore your um you know your semen and i mean obviously that that is true at a base level but then he ex- he takes that and extrapolates it to a point where he doesn't need to where he's like oh coming too much is it'll kill you it'll take all your take all your vitality like it'll literally drain your vitality i think is what he says he's <laughs> is like that don't why come i'm too so much. tired all the time <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, yeah chris you know what you don't need to go to the doctor and get any more tests we figured it out yep Cancel all the tests. Cancel the MRI. Wait, I thought you said I shouldn't be repressing my sexuality, though. This is confusing. Yeah, it is, right? Uh, when he... do I get to fuck a ghost? <laughs> Never. There's no ghost fucking in this. God you know damn what? it. I was really hoping we'd get ghost fucking, maybe ghost and humans fucking. Like, I, I wasn't sure what to expect with this book, but I did not expect any of the things that we received from this book. I think the best we get is thought uh, jizz ghosts fucking, yeah, right? Yeah, I think, I think astral babies and thought form sex are the only things we're getting. Um, <laughs> he also... This porno's terrible. So, like, he... So, like I just mentioned, you know, he has this divine fallacy going where he's like, oh, sex is so awesome. It has to be, like, divine and unexplainable. He acts like throughout the whole book, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, sex is always being talked about and practiced. But, like, it happens with no understanding. We don't know where our sexual feelings come from or what they're meant to do or how to use them. It's like, dude, there's plenty of, like academic scholarship scientific scholarship and layman's articles about sex like sex is not an alien concept that no one has ever thought about deeply or studied like no I... but you see david's figured it out the best that's what's really happening here yeah, yeah they I'm don't gonna... understand like i do baby now come to bed with me and let me show you <laughs> how to make some real thought forms oh god oh yeah it's it's just uh... <laughs> All right, I, I want to say, make a statement. We're a half an hour in here, so I'm going to make the statement that I made to you earlier Which... that might be perhaps the... We, we lost the Wild Animus episode. So um, out of all the ones that have been published, this book is only second to that book in terms of how fucking bad it is. This is definitely top three at a minimum worst books we've ever read, I got to say. Yeah, I think... Um, well, so... I Okay, I agree with you. So in terms of like when we're when we're ranking... I, I think when we think about ranking um, the worst books and why they're so bad, you know, there there are things that we have to consider. Like something that we never initially really thought about was how a terrible book could also be dangerous, right? 
And I think I think that didn't really dawn on us until Melanie's marvelous measles happened. Yep. I think that for me is number one because that could literally kill millions in the yep. in, you know in the wrong you know if the, the wrong... body count potential is high. Yeah, it's it's a really I think it, that's probably the most literally dangerous book that we have read because if you have enough if you haven't listened to that episode it's a children's book uh meant to convince children that uh vaccines are bad and that they can fight uh really dangerous diseases by just getting sunshine and drinking water and eating organic produce oh my god everyone wants us to worship the sun moving on um (laughs) but so so that one i think is like literally the most dangerous and then we have something like this or like ho tactics uh, Ho Tactics was another episode, I don't know, it was a while ago, um, where we have people giving advice, and no matter how well-intentioned they are, the advice might fuck up some people's lives. Like, Ho Tactics, I feel like, dude, if you're not ready to almost prostitute yourself for profit, like, to emotionally and mentally prostitute yourself for profit, and in some cases, actually prostitute yourself? Like, uh, first of all, I don't even know if anyone can really be ready for that and actually kind of all for it. I mean, I, there's, I don't have anything against... I'm sure against... there's people out there that live that life very comfortably. Sure, like, I, you know, there are, there are um, you know, positive, willing sex workers, but they are the extreme minority. You know, most, most sex work is forced or coerced, so... Um, I mean, I I think that like if if you're going into it willingly and you actually enjoy it and it's not, I I don't know. For me, I I find it really hard to believe that work like that doesn't have um, deep mental and emotional consequences. I mean, and physical in some cases, you know. Well, so it I think... definitely has consequences, but to, you know, it, it might be fine for some. Like even if they're negative, they might be able to cope with them in whatever way they have. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not. Uh, it's definitely a. a, a a line of work that can have a lot more danger to it than a lot of others mentally, I guess I could say, just dealing with, like, creeps online. Yeah, I mean, and also I think that – I actually think I'm I may be getting cl- too close to merging two things that are very dissimilar, but, like, with Ho Tactics, that, that book was not an instructional book for sex workers. Um Nope. It was, that was just for your for, average for your lady. average woman who was trying to go on dates, and that's why I actually think it's very dangerous because you're telling women. I mean, you can listen to the episode, but it's essentially like you're telling women men are gonna play you no matter what, so you gotta play them first, and you gotta you gotta treat men like marks, and you gotta get as much money and physical goods and as much benefit out of that relationship as you can. Play them for six months to a year, and then bounce, and. I just think that the average person isn't really ready to yeah. uh, become. I mean, a at the top like of the that. book, he says this is for only them real hoes, though. So there's supposed to be sort of a self selection thing happening there. Yeah, but that's but probably I... not going to happen in real life. I would say that book is more dangerous than this one, though. This one's just stupid. Yeah, yeah. This one, this one. I mean, this one is yeah, just kind of all over the place. I will say though, it was really easy to read because it was so dumb and short. Yeah, like, it, it was, wasn't. <laughs> It's surface level interpretations of a lot of things. Yeah, it's it's real just like you can read this while barely paying attention. Uh it definitely wasn't like it was painful to read in a different way. It wasn't painful to read line by line. It was just painful when you realized how dumb it was. Like actually it was it was more painful when you stopped to think about it for a few seconds. Um but yeah, I I will uh agree to the point you made like 10 minutes ago before I started <laughs> rambling um that this is this is up there. I think Let's talk about yeah. some more stupid shit. How about uh Ugh, the pyramid man. metaphor? Oh, uh, you get uh, dude, that was dumb as fuck. I I don't okay. know. Okay, so like you have a pyramid. This is when we were in Egypt when we used our astral dead body or whatever to fly to Egypt to see a pyramid. You can't just Google that shit when you're alive, I guess. Or, or just imagine the shape yeah. of a fucking also pyramid. Also that. Uh, well, you see, the pyramid thought form hadn't fucked my brain yet, so <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know about pyramids. Anyway, so the idea here. Okay, there's three levels of like philosophy. There's facts and figures, and by the way, that's bullshit. Facts and figures are. Crap! They contradict each other all the time, man. We don't need no facts, no figures in here. Hey, is hey, a, a hey, statement. hey, hey! How'd you get that fucking pyramid? 
how'd you get that pyramid without facts and figures, you fuck? Um, That's all uh, I can well, think about. I was so mad. Oh, okay. You need see, math to the, build a pyramid. The, Jesus. <laughs> the sides are far apart, illustrating how facts and figures uh, contradict each other somehow. But okay, then the second layer is higher up where stuff is closer together. And that's the one about uh, laws, I think, or something like uh, that. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking remember. And then the point is where all things come together. And everything's super simple. And that's the best place to observe things. If you can just be reductive about it and simplify it, then you can apply that to everything. And that's the stupidest way to apply philosophy I've ever heard. Yeah. Um. I mean, there are, there are like, I'm trying to think of, oh, yeah. Another thing that I, like, this, this book really fails to include... Um, non-binary people, gay people, trans people. Like, this book just forgets about anyone who isn't a heteronormative white dude trying to pick up chicks at a bar. At least that's what it comes across as. Like I said... There's one he... line somewhere that's like, it's okay if you're married to whoever. It... I don't care about marriage in the eyes of the law. It's just about who you love right now. But their energy better be, like, kind of feminine if you're masculine. He wants you to balance everything and have an androgynous mind. Oh, right, But he right. still talks about masculine energy people being attracted to feminine energy people which why which by the way is the same thing as yin and yang for some fucking reason well i mean yin and, yin and yang are uh he did actually use those in the correct sense sorry to burst your bubble there but oh uh, i thought he was just throwing shit together no 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 the yin is the the sun masculine and yang is the dark feminine earth yeah he was i mean okay. in in the traditional like chinese i mean at least what i maybe i'm wrong but i I only know because I was uh, I listened to uh, this podcast called GM Word of the Week, which is about um, nerdy words used in role playing games. But I just really love etymology and like discovering um, how words formed and where they came from that and all that stuff. Neat. So, oh, it's a fucking awesome show. The guy has like a really uh, relaxing voice, though. So uh, just like don't listen to it if you're if you're like trying to stay awake. Um, <laughs> But uh, and anyway, uh, yeah, back I don't know. To stupidity. He, was, he was talking about those things recently, so that's the only reason it's in my mind. But um, he says that the uh, the your like astral body is the blueprint upon which your physical body was built. And I was like, well, that's not the case for poor trans people, considering their true astral body definitely doesn't match the body they were born into. I mean, I I just like. I don't know. I'm just I just try to think about, you know, when when people like this guy are so confident about these universal truths, all I can do is sit here and think of all the exceptions. And it's like there are just so many. Like none There's of this plenty of them. None of There's this of is oh, it's so How bad. How about his idea that okay, sex is powerful because it propels evolution? I think uh have you never heard of mitosis before? Oh yeah. I do. <laughs> I really I laughed so hard when I read your note. You you should read exactly what you wrote down because it was pretty funny. Sex propels evolution, says man who never heard of my Tyson. <laughs> same, same joke, essentially, just phrases a headline. Yeah, but, I like mean... it, I, I know, like okay, maybe sex does recombine genes quicker than playing asexual uh, reproduction sure, that might rely sure, on mutation sure. more than that. But it still fucking happens. It still propels evolution in a way. Yeah, I mean, he does a lot of things like that, and I don't know, like, like we're saying, you know, he did make a, a statement that was like, I don't care, it doesn't matter what genitals are being used, as long as there's masculine and feminine energies, but then he spends the whole time talking about dicks and vaginas, and how everything is a dick and a vagina, and it's like, if the actual genitals don't matter, then why are you always talking about dicks going to vaginas? Like, I just... <laughs> I just think that you he... know what is also a dick or a vagina Ugh. is a, a certain th thing that a Tongan man see. Oh, so he, he brings up this story of like, uh, oh, this Tongan man once uh, went outside and he was enjoying nature's beauty and having a good moment. And then he saw a tree with a branch that looked like a dick and he laughed about it and how simple and wonderful nature is and how everything is a dick, I guess. And that was like a enlightening moment for him or something. That's about as far as it went. There wasn't anything yeah. deeper than that, oh, right? Oh, I didn't miss anything. Here, oh, God. Here's the best. The best part of that whole story, his whole little stupid fantasy story was like, 
so like i said some some of the conventions he uses are like oh we're dead so we're gonna go to like different places in the world and like he goes to egypt and then we're like in india or something i don't remember at one like, point he says oh, now we're... let's go to a child's playground and i'm like no no please <laughs> yeah, i saw that no and i laughed fucking hard um he says now we're gonna go to the island of tonga you know a lot you know we're gonna go there a long time ago you know only two group family groups lived on this island and there was this guy, and it's, you know, the guy Chris was just talking about who saw the dick tree. And then towards the end of the story, he goes, and the guy, you know, after he discovers the truth of the universe by seeing the fucking dick tree for whatever reason, <laughs> he steps on a tooth. And he laughs because finding the tooth meant that he, you know, he laughed at how similar it was to finding the truth. And I was like, <laughs> if we're on the <laughs> island of Tonga That's thousands of years ago, but, like, if we're on the island of Tonga thousands of years ago, that guy wasn't speaking English. I'm sure <laughs> that the word for tooth and truth in Tongan are, like, not similar sounding and similar in construction like they are in English. Um, I mean, if you're Tongan, if please are... email the show and let us know. If if that is the case or not. I yeah, suppose. like, I mean, I guess it's possible, but it would be a hell of a fucking coincidence considering English and Tongan are incredibly far apart on the tree of language. <laughs> so... Yeah. Which is different from the dick tree, which, by the way, it, it's it's a perfect metaphor for sex. Again, in, in sexuality, you see, because the, the root part that looked like the dick was, like, going down into the earth. And you gotta send your sexual energy down first so that you can also send it back up to the sun but to for to make sure the sun knows you appreciate it it giving you the big dick energy yep. or something and then I think you have what... to fuck the sun that's all i <laughs> yeah. kept coming to understand by the end of this book was you got to fuck the sun also throw your trash into the sun yeah. because the sun, the sun... <laughs> oh yeah he tells you to like throw that the, the, your bad personality that those branches the the broken branches of your bad personality traits into the sun so that it can return to you the Sunny D boner that you've been craving so that you can fuck the sun. I don't know, man. So, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know. Now I'm just I'm just going through my minor notes. Like, he also co-ops the concept of green language just, like, real quick for his own bullshit. Actually, during the dick tree story. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just going to stop for one second. If you have stumbled into this episode, you probably, like, it, it sounds like we are just saying random things but no we're critiquing a real book all of these things are in this book this we are Who's doing the best we 42 can 42 minutes into an episode paris they no one's downloading the file and skipping ahead 40 minutes in well, unless up. someone's like broadcasting this at their work and like a co-worker walks in in which case i'm sorry <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it, you could have it on at home and your partner or friend or family member could walk in. Uh, you could accidentally whack the fucking uh, the 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 bar on the podcast while it's playing, as I have done before, and okay, end up enough. randomly at a part of the episode. Um, somebody could tell you to start here. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, listen to this podcast. Start 42 <laughs> minutes in. It's really great. <laughs> you just avoid all the setup. <laughs> Um, but he concept, co concept, oh, Jesus Christ, co-ops the concept of green language, which is weird because he doesn't really bring up any other, um, occult or alchemical, like a kind of like esoteric magical shit at all. It's all, it's all very, like we said, like Eastern tantric stuff and like the Abrahamic faiths. So it's weird that all of a sudden green language is there. I mean, green language is also called bird language. <laughs> um it's it's an occult or alchemical idea and it it's uh, it's supposed to be the perfect language that exists exists between the divine um and alchemical practitioners in particular consider uh green language or bird language the language of true knowledge um and that that's kind of what he's referring to when he uses it although he he just throws it in there like i swear to god this guy was just like googled like one true language and like this is what he found um I mean, I'm I'm not I'm, I don't know a lot about it. I've just heard about it before because I've read a little bit about. Um, I've only ever heard of shit, bird but... law before. Bird law? What's bird law? <laughs> you should watch it. So we study in Philadelphia to get that one. Oh oh oh! I thought this was a real thing. You had me going no. there for a second. No, sadly, I was, I was like, "What is?" Let's bird talk about law? more bo dumb book stuff like how the classic like idiot. There's two classic idiot examples that I saw in this book that I just rolled my eyes at because you see them in stupid books everywhere. 
One was that uh, example of selfish lovers and like, oh, he picked her up at the bar. Uh, therefore, he doesn't really care about anything at all. And this is bad sex because God forbid you just hook up with someone one night. And then the other classic idiot example of like, hey, man, energy doesn't ever die. So that means we don't ever really die. Right. Oh, yeah, that that's um, an argument a lot of people have made for um, reincarnation or um, the existence of the afterlife. But uh, I don't really like I've never really read anything that has made me feel like they've made that connection. It's just kind of like they're making it's almost a false analogy, right? They're, they're drawing. Yeah. That's <laughs> all it is. You know, it's like you can't really use the same uh, words to talk about physical objects uh, that you use to talk about emotional states or feelings, a right? Like energy that's... isn't sentience. That's all it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, right. I mean, he also, like, the the whole thing about, like, the sun is a source of sexual energy, too, is this, like, extremely reductive, like, well, all life on Earth is due to the sun, therefore, s the sun is the ultimate source of sexual energy, and it's like, dude, I, like, yeah, if you're gonna get, like, real reductive about it, I guess, like... No, but because, you see, when you stand that... at the top of the pyramid with the point where everything's so simple, you can understand everything because when you're at the top of the pyramid, you just don't have to fucking think about anything. That's really what that is, dude. It, the top of the pyramid is the part where you don't have to think about anything. <laughs> so everything seems real easy to define. Yeah, I mean, I just I just don't – like. but you could you could also get real reductive and say that about water. Like all life on Earth couldn't exist without water either or like – well, you know, with oh, no. moisture. Um, he has to go back and rethink this whole thing now. Uh, David, I'm sorry to b burst your bubble here, but like, what about what about, about air? What about air? Why why is you know oxygen not the not? Why aren't we trying to fuck oxygen? Like, I mean, I feel like, I, well, actually, actually, no, 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 we are trying to fuck oxygen True. because because without oxygen, there's no fire, there's no sun, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, my god! Hey, you're fuck right. oxygen. Uh, <laughs> We're already fucking the sun in reality over here anyway, and thoughts. So honestly, why not? I mean, Just, just get in the bed here, Eric. Like, Eric, an, Eric, come on in. Another room for you. Yeah, yeah. No, Chris. Um, we can only have pure, true sex when we're in love with the other person, and he never talks about multiple partners. Every, <laughs> true Christian monogamy is the only thing that this guy is peddling, no matter how much he protests. Yeah, um, and God does randomly come up. He's like, "Oh, this this relationship that is valued seen in the eyes of God." Comes also, up the sun is God. The sun is God. He says that a couple times. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some other dumb shit like, uh, he's talking about, uh, chakras, and he says we possess a system of ducts that are specially designed to carry our sexual energy up to our head. And my note was just, "You mean nerves, bro?" <laughs> like I was like. Like what? How about I his just... like the worst definition of sex I've ever heard? <laughs> okay, this is David Stom's definition of sex. So if you if you've ever wondered, hey, am I a virgin still? All right, sex is the rhythmic intercourse of polar opposites. Uh, no. So if, <laughs> if you ever put a cold marshmallow in a warm fire, yeah, you're not a virgin anymore, bud. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. He also, he also makes this really grandiose assumption that I, I don't know, I guess I can forgive him for because it's, it's common for humans to do. It's common for philosophers to do even, um, he says that the essential purpose of the cosmos is humanity. Um, he says this indirectly, he says with sex responsible for nothing less than the essential purpose of the cosmos and he goes on, like, I really think he believes that either human life or just the existence of life overall, like, organisms, uh, is the purpose of the cosmos. And it's like, I don't really, I mean, it's a nice thought, but, like, let's sure, not, let's but... not get ahead of ourselves. Like, yeah. we, there's no reason to believe that humanity or frogs or cats <laughs> or water bears or any of this shit is the purpose of the fucking cosmos. What about those horny plants that are always trying to fuck me with their dick roots? <laughs> no, that's only on Tonga. Oh, okay. Well, as long as I don't go there, I think <laughs> yeah, I Yeah, so I'm going to Tonga. <laughs> Stupid fucking book. Holy shit, Paris. I know, it's... And, and, you know, and, like, he never really... 
he never addresses things in detail. I mean, that's like one of my main complaints, like I said, is that he ends up contradicting himself a lot because he just glosses over things. Like he says, you know, don't ever suppress your sexual urges, but also don't let it get wild. And it's always good to, uh, to give in to your sexual urges. But then like he never tackles pedophilia, rape or bestiality, which I feel like are really crucial. If you're ta- if you're trying to create a sexual philosophy and talking about, suppression of sexual desire uh and, and like and like balancing your sexual desire like those are kind of the three things that are really important to address and he never touches any of them well it's just listen just david's he knows all this stuff for sure he knows what holds atoms together paris do you know what holds <laughs> atoms together paris uh i mean aren't atoms actually i don't even know what atoms are really held together with to be honest with you um, it's love, actually. Paris. Oh, oh Turns out. great. Okay, cool. I'm glad I know that now. I'm glad. Do they like hug real hard? Is that what it is? Yeah. Or, the no, no, electron. No, wait. They're, no, 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 wait. They're constantly grinding up against each other yeah. because that's the definition <laughs> of sex and therefore The love. nucleus rubs up on the, the sexy electrons <laughs> who are feminine because they're a circle and the, the nucleus yeah. is the dot in the middle because monads, Paris. Uh, monads are everything. Everything's a monad. Yeah, he says the the oh right, the monad is just a circle with a dot in it. I didn't even bother to research that to see if that's really uh the name of that symbol. I mean, it's just a tit symbol. Like, I mean, <laughs> I was honestly so surprised that he didn't talk. He only mentions breasts like once in this entire book, and he never. I don't think he ever mentions that. That looks like a, a boob. I don't know. Um, but like. Oh, he's just so terrible. I just. Uh... Do you have any other stupid things? Oh, to, yeah. To talk um, about? So I got a couple of actually stupid and potentially dangerous ideas. Actually, the most dangerous of all these ideas, other than forcing yourself into uh, heterosexual uh, white Western marriage. Um, I don't know why I said white. There's just something real white about this book. It just it just exudes whiteness i i don't know did, did you get that feeling too pretty much i mean it reads like a book you know he touches on like these eastern cultures in a very surface way like someone that took a trip to india one yeah, time yeah yes you're right that is what it is yeah yeah okay um and he came back super enlightened and ready to show you all the uh, magic mysteries of of the universe in his bedroom yeah, so here's some... Oh, actually, wait. Okay, I'll talk about one... Uh, I'll talk about two funny ones before I get to the two dangerous ones. So, uh, vaginas or hey, modems. Uh, oh, yeah. Vaginas or okay. modems. And penises or farmers. Um, <laughs> Elaborate, perhaps? So, or... so, towards the end of the book, he talks about how if you train yourself, you can use your sexual organs for different purposes other than just putting them into other sexual organs or whatever. Um, As I highlighted that section and I just, my note was just, uh Oh, because there's no good. Thing to come um, he says that men who learn how to like control their penises can will their crops to be better. Yep. That's um, totally... And he also I do says, enough Kegels and my, my harvest is bountiful. Uh, dude, my favorite is when he talks about how vaginas are like modems or something. I don't know if modem and modem is really the best uh, way to put it, but he says that if you're a woman, you can train yourself to sense other people's frequencies with your vagina and transmit thoughts. I mean, have you tried? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he actually taught me how to do it, that'd be great. But he didn't teach me shit in this book. Yeah, that's another thing in this book. There's not really any, like, for the conflicts that he mentions you might have in your, I don't know, thought sex journey or whatever, your son fucking fat, whatever the fuck you're supposed to be doing here. He Like, there's no Ill- examples of, like, conflicts that you might face and, like, strategies to cope with controlling your sexual energy or balancing your masculine and feminine yeah, energy. He just right? like gives one example of like, here's a bad thing and here's a good thing. Be like the good thing. Yeah. He doesn't actually, like I said, there's no showing, there's no explaining, there's no teaching. Um, oh, oh God. I, I found this, <laughs> you know, this is actually a rare episode. 
um, where Chris finished the book before I did. That almost never happens. I almost always finish the book before Chris because I, I usually, I don't know why, like, I, that just usually happens. This time it didn't. So sadly, Chris did not see my hilarious notes. Um, I tend to leave him notes in the in the book. Uh, and <laughs> there's a part where he's talking about, oh, real love versus like lust love. And he says, they don't even need to touch each other to make love. And my note was, oh, no, Dean Jean-Pierre, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Who let you dude- in? This dude is totally a mashup of John Edward and Jean Do- oh uh, Dean Jean Pierre. It really is. Oh yeah, he's he also says that um when you have uh the real truce the one true sex or whatever with like the person <laughs> you like you're one you're, true sex the to one rule true them sex. all and um, in darkness bind them. It says you reveal oh god no in sunlight bind them. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it says they remain awake and alert the whole time, even during orgasm. And I wrote, "What a shitty orgasm!" Like yeah. I, just, I don't want to be alert. The idea is to put like them to sleep, right? Like great, I'm having an orgasm and thinking about like, oh man, I really gotta put the kettle on. I really want some tea after this. <laughs> like Jesus, no, I don't want to be thinking about anything. Uh, can I t- t- I'm gonna another stupid thing here is the another basic bitch kind of metaphor is he uses the. Uh, Oh, there's a princess in a tower guarded by a dragon that a knight has to fight to explain, like, I don't know, the prince, I forgot exactly how this works. The princess is your soul. The dragon's your sexual energy. Yep, yep, you're you, right. The you, towers, the knight, are, towers are guarded. Your, towers, your physical body. Oh, okay. You, the knight, are guarded by your wisdom shields and your pure thought form sword. And, like, he talks about your aura as if, like, it grants you protection from the dragon and from the oh, jizz ghosts from earlier. Yeah, that's so right. I was I, my note on this one was like I'm pretty sure only paladins and clerics can take that feat. <laughs> I if you're, like you're a ranger or a thief or something, you're kind of like what are you supposed to do? Yeah, like does that wait, oh yeah, I see your note. Plus two defense to jizz ghosts, semen demons. <laughs> I couldn't decide whether to call them jizz ghosts or semen demons. Semen so. demons is pretty good. Um All right, so the, all right, my other funny, like, my, my all right, two two funny things, two bad things. So the one thing was that vaginas are, like, uh, I don't know, weird cell phones or modems or something, and penises are farmers. They can just will crops to grow. Yep. Um, he actually states that love can heat matter and make it yep. malleable. And I was just like, excuse me, I've been able to just cook food through sheer force of will my whole life and didn't know No, you have like, to really love that hot pocket like look at it with like real understanding oh my of god the hot oh my god oh my god being. chris 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 you just uncovered something hot oh, no. pockets hot pockets are the perfect food do you know oh, why why they are both a one and a zero they are oh, both my god. they are holy both, shit they are both, Penis I always knew it on a vagina. deep level, but <laughs> <laughs> did you say a hamgina? <laughs> no, no, but I wish I had. <laughs> I always knew it. Those uh, meatball mozzarella is filling inside of me. I was just filling myself. You know, <laughs> that's actually it. You know, the perfect middle school meal of a hot pocket, some sunny D, just fills you. <laughs> With the oh my perfect God. balance of sexual that's, energy. That's why you're that's so horny so all the time. Horny. Chris! We... <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> you're going to have to edit my laugh squeaks. Because oh, I'm sure no. those tones oh are my God. painful. Oh, God, my vision is blurry. My mascara is in my <laughs> eyes. Oh, Jesus. We've unlocked the mysteries of the universe oh, there. Everyone listen out there, go get yourself some Sunny D in a Hot Pocket and go to town. You know, fuck oysters, Sunny D in a Hot Pocket. (laughs) The ultimate aphrodisiac. Next time you're at home with with that significant other of yours coming in from work, trying to relax, bring them into the bedroom, covered in rose petals, candles all around, and the scent of a nice ham and cheese Hot Pocket wafting across the door frame. Did you say wafting? Yeah. I'm sorry, I mispronounced wafting. it. Wafting. I'm sorry. I know it was actually funnier than you said wafting. And don't forget the the sunny D in a wine glass <laughs> perched on the nightside table. Oh wow. Oh. Um. 
you know what actually was making this even funnier to me was that um uh the artist who did my band's uh most recent logo uh this guy josh he's an amazing calligrapher and artist and uh but he's also really funny and um he uh cre- he recently started just making these really stupid uh like joke photoshops of hot pockets and like lays chip flavors and things like that and so all i could think about was the joke hot pocket flavors <laughs> which like one of them was like belly button flavor you know? <laughs> like you know just like totally horrifying and he Oh man! I, like, uh, actually, you, he has... we gotta get him to put like Sunny D flavored hot pockets into reality somehow. Dude, I will. I will specifically. Oh my god, I'm gonna ask him to do this. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't charge me money. I mean, he might. He, I like. I am. I'll a pay for that. Um, for the for the ultimate hugest dick energy <laughs> food ever to be created. Like at oh least god. you know concept arted out, so I can go to uh, oh whoever the fuck owns hot pockets and Sunny I'm D. Sure episode <laughs> yes please <laughs> oh my god he's honestly probably too busy to make it in time but um i will ask him uh i'm just gonna we can find if... someone else to do it too i'm sure there's like a template out there or something his uh oh no i'm trying to find what the instagram he made was for uh the fucking like we'll post stupid... it with the episode too yeah How about that? um we'll... it... <sighs> fuck i can't remember what it was called god damn it all right, Paris. Um, we anyway, don't really have. Anyway, no, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, we'll find that. Uh, we'll we'll let you know what the. There's uh, another okay. stupid thing that I, was in the notes that we have for this episode. I think you should bring up. It's. I think after what we just uncovered, it's not going to have as much impact. But I think it's a real bright idea, and it's your um uh, global warming. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> theory. Oh, oh. All right. So all right. So we've talked about how this guy thinks the sun is the source of all sexual energy because he just forgets that other elements are needed to create life and he thinks that the sun is just somehow more important um and so you know he has a point right like we all we all need the sun crops need the sun people need the sun you know fucking everyone needs the sun right but um lately uh we've been getting getting a little too much heat from the sun right because we've got this this layer of uh co2 that is trapping all this excess heat so like what if like we're trying to fuck the sun real hard like we're sending all of yep. our fuck juice up to the sun all the big we dick are, energy we're like sending sent it to the sun oh we're sending it but that layer of co2 is trapping our yeah. fuck juice and it's sending it back down to the earth so like climate change is just the earth way too horny the earth yep. is so <laughs> full of all of our fuck energy that we've been trying yeah. to send out it's getting trapped and sent back down so like the earth is just full of our fuck energy and it's just having all these like fucking mood swings like it just really wants to fuck the sun too but it can't because it's the fucking earth and it can't get there but like we're teasing <laughs> it with our fuck energy so i think we I need figured some out cap and trade fuck energy deals passed in congress so that we can reduce fuck juice emissions <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, Earth is too anything? horny. Climate change. Uh, actually, I have... Um, actually, I I have the two serious, actual problematic things that oh, I yeah, need okay. to talk well, yeah, about. Yeah, let's close on that Shit. note, I suppose. Okay. The two things that he's, he talks about in the book that I think are actually harmful. Uh, he says that seeing beautiful things gives you more life force. Hey, are you dying? Go look at a painting. Go to a symphony. Obtain more life force. Like Also, what if I'm what? blind? Which I kind of am. Yeah, you are, technically. Legally. Does that mean I get less of the, the, the good juice or whatever? Well, I mean, beauty doesn't isn't totally dependent on color, uh, right? Or, or yeah. vision. Well, seeing is dependent on yeah. vision. Yeah, that's seeing. It's Sorry. also the seeing parts, not just the colors. Sorry. Part yeah. It's that so, all around. I mean, so again, you know, you have him not thinking about the kind of the full gamut of what humanity looks like, right? You know, he's forgetting about trans people and gay people. He's forget non-binary people. He's forgetting about those of you who may not have, you know, perfect, full color, uh, sharp vision. I'm sure there are other criticisms that could be made. Um, But then he says this. So after he's like, 
hey, you kind of die and go look at a painting. I mean, he doesn't actually say that, but he literally says seeing beautiful things restores, gives you more life force. I mean, I, I'm assuming what he meant was that like, hey, if, you know, your life is kind of shitty, like maybe go look at some art stuff or like go outside, but that's not really how it comes across. And he then immediately after that says, hey, hey, if you're depressed, just go love someone. What? Simple. Easy peasy. What? It's easy, Paris. Like, dude, I don't think you understand what depression is. And also, like, telling someone you can fix your world just by loving something. I mean, that is Wouldn't that it be nice not... if that's how it worked? Well, and that's what he says. He's like, the whole time, he's like, he's like, you know, he kind of goes back and forth. Because at some points in the book, he's like, oh, man, the pinnacle of human existence is like, finding that person you know that makes you whole uh he literally says like finding that that other person that makes you whole and like um merging your minds with them and like balancing your masculine fem- feminine energies and then at other times he's like oh you don't have to be in love with a person like love a cat love the sun love a tree and you're like okay so you know wh- which is it is it is it do i do I find my my quote unquote soulmate or do I just force myself to love this cat because I don't have a soulmate, but I have to love something um, because I guess you can just spontaneously push love onto things. And I mean, and that that's not healthy either. I mean, ugh, the ramifications of this book are many and terrible. He wants you to, <laughs> to fuck them with your jizz ghosts, I think, more than your actual parts is the idea here oh, oh oh yeah that's true i did forget i did forget about my just ghosts um yeah. don't forget about them they're I always know. there watching they're always there all of my astral baby is just floating <laughs> around like i mean so what's like what's like the limit on the astral plane is it is it just like infinite i guess it's infinite let me right? tell you if if, if if it's every time someone master it's fucking crowded out that, there, that's so. what i'm saying like it's gotta be uh it's gotta be um <clears throat> ooh, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse I, I me, I've been yelling about any... hot pockets for too long. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything more to say about this bullshit, Paris. But boy was this a this was a special episode. Oh, it sure was, dude. Uh whew, well, you know what, everybody? I will say, what the fuck? I thought I was gonna be able to fuck a ghost. And there was none of that in this episode. I am no closer to 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 being able to uh, uh, to to do it with a transparent person. Yeah, I mean I really just I honestly I thought it would be really funny if I, I cuz I thought what was going to happen is this book was going to be like, "All right, you're in your room, light a candle, like you know, repeat this phrase and and meditate until you get on the astral plane and then go find a ghost to fuck." And like that would have been <laughs> hilarious. And that's what I thought was going to happen, that's but what we I didn't even too. get that. I know. So, I don't know. You uh listeners, if you've got a how-to book, kind of an instructional book that you think is really terrible, uh please send it our way because we we would like to actually try something like that because it would I be fun. I thought I was going to be able to lie back and like journey into the land of ghosts and find myself some Deceased 1950s pinup lady and have a, a grand old time. <laughs> oh but... boy, that's specific. I didn't know that. I didn't know you're into that. That's interesting. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. I yeah. Can see that. Yeah. When you consider some things, it makes sense. <laughs> oh, a- actually, like uh, I. So this is an aside, but I-, I have some Betty Page coasters that I don't want. Do you? Do you want them? Sure. Okay, great. I'm so glad I can finally get rid of those. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're so people... tacky and like frat housey. No, no, it's have... because it's because people make really stupid assumptions about girls with facial piercings and dyed hair. I mean, I haven't dyed my hair in years, but at the time that I received the Betty Page coasters as a gift, it was because one of my coworkers was like, "Oh, you have facial piercings and dyed hair. You must like Betty Page." And I was like, "Nah, not really." <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Well, anyway. now I can have them. Yeah, now, now you can have them, and uh, I fear what they will see. I have to explain myself every see. time I serve drinks. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, th- thanks for thanks for being here with us, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate all, all of you who are listening. Um, <clears throat> like downloads have been really great lately, so thank you. Y- you are all clearly telling people about the show or sharing it or something, and we super appreciate that. Oh man, special shout out 
to those couple of you who rated us on iTunes after I, I, you know, pled for someone to do so to a couple of you actually did it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank I, that's you very really much. great. I really appreciate it. And you know what? Special shout out to the person who gave us four stars because you know what? That's an honest ass review. Yeah. And I appreciate exactly. that shit. So thank you, four star. I don't know who the hell you are, but thank you. You will forever now forever be known as four star. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But really, uh, let's let's thank our real MVPs here, the people who directly fund um, us so that we can buy books and Kindle books and uh, pay for our hosting. We got Greg, Veronica, Will, D, Jared, and drumroll, please. The return of Dari. Hooray. Hooray. Dari's back. Woohoo. Uh, Dari is our was our first patron and uh, she was, I don't know, on patron vacation for a little bit, but she's back. She actually... Just told us she was back during the recording of this episode, and Chris and I both noticed it right before the end. So, Dari, you are... Oh, you know what? She's she's connected to us on the astral plane, Chris. That's, that's what it That's exactly was. what happened. Yep. That's exactly it. Oh, that's it. You know what? That's that's why she's, like, been uh, been a patron for so long. And, like, exactly. <laughs> she's, our, she's our astral soulmate. Dari, our astral soulmate. Okay. Um, anyway, if you would also like to become a patron and um, help us pay for books and hosting and, you know, all that fun stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash join slash terrible book club and check out our extra content and rewards. They're pretty cheap. So, you know, if you buy a latte every week or if you get, I don't know, a happy meal or some shit, fuck that. Throw that in the trash. Pay us <laughs> instead. Uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, maybe, so, you know, don't buy it in the first place and then throw it in the trash because you already spent the money. So you kind of like true. <laughs> fucking yourself over a sorry, little bit. Sorry, I'm delirious after <laughs> after recording this episode. I was screaming a lot. My throat kind of hurts. Um, Me too. You... I got to work uh, seven hours tomorrow talking, so I hope I'm good. Oh, That's true. That's true. Um, so speaking of Patreon, uh, our new Patreon content for 2019 rolls out next week. So... Uh, by the time you're listening to this, um, we should have that first little taste of Patreon content ready the following week. So right, a week after this episode airs, uh, that should be there for any of you who are $5 a month patrons or more. So um, all I'll say about it is that um, we watched a movie adaptation of a previous terrible book. And that's all you get to know for right now. Yep. Uh, Tune in next week to find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do love when you say hi to us and interact with us. Uh, so please reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and Facebook. Uh, you can also send us emails um, at terriblebookclub at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that's kind of all I got. I mean, hey, if uh, if you're like those other awesome people, like our patrons and those glorious humans who gave us ratings and reviews on iTunes... Please um, just share the show on social media. Tell people about it. Honestly, word of mouth is really powerful with podcasts because yep. there are so many like th hundreds of thousands of podcasts or tens of thousands of I don't know. There's a lot of fucking podcasts out there. Um, there's a we'll lot of ways to spend time putting random people's voices in your ears. And some of you choose to put us there. Yes. Yeah, so, so so if you tell so other people, we can uh, jizz ghost our thought forms <laughs> uh, uh, about yeah. bad books Please. into your a feminine brain receivers modems. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I think we're both broken, and I think I'm gonna go drink my last treehouse beer and pet a cat. I think that's what I'm gonna go do. I uh, uh I have some Sunny D and a hot pocket lined up, and I'm gonna call my <laughs> girlfriend. And oh boy! All right, all right. Well, good night, everybody. Bye. Everybody.